Callum, you're going to talk about, you're the Head of Insights at Saddings and Baines, measuring emotions, putting influence and marketing to the test. Hopefully, yeah. Go for it. Awesome. Yeah, it feels very uh, silent disco vibes here. Uh, so. Okay, so as, as you said, I'm Callum and I'm Head of Insights at Creative Production Studio, Saddings and Baines. So our mission has and always will be to create the most engaging and effective imagery for our campaigns, inspiring devotion and telling the most evocative stories. But how can we do this successfully while mitigating creative differences in the boardroom? So my role brings together art and science with the hope of removing any of those arguments. We're using implicit neuroscience to uncover the emotional impact of imagery. Our desire is to unlock insights for brands so we can use consumer-centric data to inform and optimize creative decisions, drive effectiveness, and boost brand loyalty and ROI. And you may be thinking, why is someone from a small creative production studio standing in front of you talking on this stage about influencer marketing? So let me explain. So a couple of years ago, Sandton Bain decided to embark on an industry-wide benchmarking study to truly understand the emotional impact of, and effectiveness of campaign imagery ideally hoping to uncover new insights, trends, and various compositional patterns that would emotionally optimize our creative decisions. The results suggested that campaigns are no longer emotionally engaging and pulling the levers we want to. One of the most prominent trends that demonstrated this was the use of talent within imagery. So after a ton of research to back up our findings, I'm here today to share with you for the very first time our influencer marketing insights. We're also going to talk about some marketing misconceptions and why sometimes we should rely on consumers' gut instincts instead of growing trends that are happening within the boardroom. So before, so before we dig into what we found, here's some background info at how we're looking at consumers and their emotions through a slightly different lens to you typically might do. Traditional market research of creative campaigns does not necessarily get to the bottom of how consumers really feel. We believe if you want to know how your consumers actually feel about your creative campaigns, you don't need to ask them. We use implicit testing, a methodology which relies on understanding a consumer's speed of response to a stimulus and can then take that data to understand how readily they associate that stimulus with a specific brand attribute. This uncovers previously unknown insights and a potential campaign effectiveness before it has even gone to market. Tying this to the use of talent and influencers, one of the things we've seen in above the line campaigns is that the increase in use of endorsements and influencers one of the, in creative visuals as brands look to utilize their expensive talent in as many ways as possible. So in 2020, Warp data estimated that influencer marketing is valued around $10 billion over the course of the year, and predicting this to rise in double-digit percentage points year on year, with platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch leading to the age of the influencer. There is no denying the short-term effectiveness and boost in ROI for brands with these influencers. However, this short-term thinking appears to be having a potentially detrimental effect on the relationship consumers have with your brand. Now, we all know that marketing budgets after the last year are under unprecedented pressure. And the rise in popularity of influencer marketing is becoming increasingly expensive. Marketers are now focusing more than ever on spending in this space. But there are already signs that this technique is being exploited and is now potentially harming brand value and authenticity. Brands are putting a face at the center of their creative strategy. There is limited research into the actual impact of this. So what is actually happening to your brand when you put a face rather than your product at the center of your campaigns? Something we use to support our research is levering the vast quantities of academic data out there on how the human brain works. Neuroscience tells us that faces use advertising as a shortcut to emotional engagement. And creating a bond with an audience is something because they're easily recognizable. And that's just a face. Obviously, a celebrity endorsement goes that much further to tapping into desire and memory in order to create and increase brand awareness. Again, this is something in the short term is really successful. However, our research suggests 
that talent in advertising is actually having a negative effect on brand value, emotional engagement, and brand trust. So let's take a look at some examples. Have a look at these cosmetic campaigns. Have a think about which ones you think are more trusted. Trust is a key metric in the cosmetic sector. Both these images are taken from the same brand and advertising the same product. One is taken from their print campaign and the other is taken from the product purchase page. What we actually found is that the image on the left, the one now on the top, now on the top, it was a product shot, was actually 400% more trusted than the campaign containing talent. This should be of concern, as it's likely that the one containing talent will be the one that consumers have the first point of contact with the brand. This particular brand as well is one that oozes trust in their overall brand messaging, and the brand owner actually speaks directly to a lot of the consumers on social media. However, their campaign imagery using talent is not evoking this same message. All this came from the benchmarking study I previously mentioned. It's outlined here in a bit more detail. As I said, we tested 300 campaigns against 30,000 respondents, collecting over 7 million data points. Now, this project had no initial hypothesis, so we weren't looking at understanding influence marketing from the start. We were open to looking at all the different visual elements which went into creating campaigns. Each campaign was tested against five core attributes, which you can see at the bottom. The five were the emotional pull, so how positively or negatively is your imagery perceived? Distinctive, do you stand out? Quality, does your campaign come across as high or low quality? Is it seen as premium? And progressive, are you able to evoke feelings of being modern just through your imagery? And then finally, there's a sector-specific value, which obviously changes per sector. And trust, was the, on the previous example, was the one we looked at in cosmetics. And the results around trust were not just a fluke. So have a look at these images from the beverage sector. Which one of these do you think, or do you feel, drove the highest emotional pull? It's probably not surprising because of what I'm talking about, but it's actually the product shot, the one creating on the, focusing on the product itself, which came out on top, clocking around 200% more emotionally positive than the other one. This is something that I personally found really surprising, to expect that a simple product shot be much less emotionally engaging, than some, again, especially when pitted against something promoting a fun lifestyle and showing the product being used in situ. Something to consider as well is the campaign on the bottom actually features some high level celebrity influencers. This particular one is US actor Ted Danson, who I imagine doesn't come cheap. You'd expect the investment made into this type of advertising would lead to an increase in brand value and emotional engagement, but it seems it does not. So why do we think emotional effectiveness is so important? But it's common knowledge that emotionally charged campaigns are key forces in driving high return on investment. Association, memory, and engagement are intrinsically linked to trust and purchase behavior. And if we, as marketers, could tap into all three, we've really hit the jackpot. It's all about long-term planning for your brand. So just to show this off, can I take a look at these three adverts? I'm sure you all remember them. I'm sure you probably remember which brands they're for. Now, what is something they all have in common? Each of these examples puts emphasis on brand message and brand identity. Now, while they may not be focused on the product itself, they all, with the exception of maybe the Coca-Cola one, they're all built around a strong creative idea which scratches that emotional itch which you all love to have. Also, notice the lack of talent, maybe with the exception of the man in the gorilla suit. These campaigns are not tied to an individual, but are wholly brand-centric. Why do we see value in building brand for the long term? Building a brand relies on an emotional connection between your product, your mission, and your consumer's beliefs. In summary, authenticity. It's no surprise that a trusted influencer endorsing your product increases sales in the short term. It may be increasing relevancy and brand recognition, but is it building trust in your brand overall? When you rely on another person to endorse your product, what you're doing is you're using their own brand to influence their audience, when they aren't necessarily adding long-term value to your brand and your audience. Plus, what happens when you brand to brand value when the influencer becomes inauthentic? This can either come from influencers or celebrities falling out of favor, such as the ongoing issues facing Chrissy Teigen this week, or can come from poor messaging, where the brand focuses on who, not what they are talking about. 
or can just come from someone who's not really fit the brand, like Snoop Dogg for Norton Antivirus. Just think, do you want to be placing your whole brand value in the hands of someone else? Also, one of the things we noticed from print campaigns we tested is the use of talent effectively promotes a lifestyle. What they're basically doing is using the same model that advertising been used for decades, the slightly different redressed umbrella term of influencer marketing. And we've found that consumers aren't completely sold into this. So we know that consumer perception has changed and brands need to be advocates of this change. Traditional marketing practices such as this one showing Bradley Cooper supporting an IWC watch, which is a very expensive watch, and flogging it in a traditional, perceived, desirable lifestyle manner is no longer driving the emotional engagement which can lead to purchase behaviours. In fact, what we're actually finding is this style of advertising, in this sense, is perpetuating distinctly negative feelings. This is not what consumers want from brands now. What we're challenging brands to do is think differently. Consider your creative campaigns and how can you stand out from the crowd. This can help increase that brand trust that is so important and people recognise you for your brand, not who you work with. Consumers crave authenticity and brands crafting product-centric campaigns are benefiting from increased emotional engagement, increased asset distinction and building brand trust for long-term successes. Simply put, having your product at the center of your campaigns and crafting unique selling points around your products for your brand is more emotionally effective than using talent. There are many conversations ongoing about how brands can continue to grow coming out of a COVID world. A key feature of this has been the idea of brand building and how to build a long-term strategy. We want brands to open up the conversation and look at using their campaigns as a starting point for all this. After all, consumers now see about 10,000 pieces of creative content per day. If you can get people emotionally invested in your brand and your product, rather than an influencer at this point, you're potentially on your way to increasing your ROI quite significantly. Your campaign imagery should be the initial hook to get consumers involved. And your influencer strategy should be coming later, once people genuinely care about your brand. Now, I want to be clear that I'm not here to say influencer marketing doesn't work at all. It should still be used in some sense. Its proven success speaks for itself. While budgets are still low and investments high, I invite you to rethink your allocating your spend to ensure you're effectively building your brand value in the long term. Peter Field, the godfather, or to help proclaim godfather of effectiveness, done a lot of work in advertising, said two years ago now at Cannes, the marketers are failing to use creativity to build brands and drive growth. What we've found here is that not much has really changed in those past two years. Creativity and understanding its impact needs to have more emphasis for brands to truly succeed in the long term. And you should not fear this. As a brand, you already have so much data on your consumers and their behaviours. However, many brands are still missing that one vital link, the emotional data. There are many reasons why brands may not have this key piece of information, access, but however, access to it now is easier than ever before, both in terms of financial investment and also from a practical standpoint. You already have a whole lot of metrics, some of them are on screen now, and adding one more to, the, one more to this, which may be the one that can really increase and be pivotal in really understanding your consumer, is something you can easily integrate into your databases. Ensuring you know how to work with this data, and making others in the business aware of the power of adding this can, give, can lead you to give, give you the leading edge of your competitors, understanding what the potential emotional impact of a creative campaign is before it even goes to market. So research methodology, methodologies such as engagement insights use implicit associations to uncover the emotional perception within creative content. We sit in a unique position to have the in-house capability to bring quantitative data to the table and put rational, data-driven ideas into a largely subjective world. Consumers, remember, are not rational people, so you're not going to get the answers you need to understand these issues by asking them directly. Undertaking this type of research, which as I said, is out, out there all the time now, gives you the ability to understand the drivers of the consumer decisions Something of massive significance when you consider that 95% of consumer decision-making is made by their system one brain. 
You are now able to uncover the real emotional levers and hopefully predict your future consumer behaviours more accurately. So in summary, I think there's a few things I'd encourage you to start thinking about. I think firstly, you should be looking to get to know how your cons consumers really feel about your brand and their creative. I think taking the time to invest in research, which is much more accessible than it was previously, would have massive benefits to your brand. Also, think creatively. Think about how you can build your campaigns and look to create a truly authentic model for your consumers. Trust your product. You know it better than anyone else, and you should build your brand on something which is permanent to your brand, not an influencer who may only be there for a short period. Also, bringing consumers' opinions into all parts of the production advertising cycle is something of massive importance. You are selling directly to them, remember. And finally, I think you should consider the long-term strategy and how all these different marketing approaches fit together, rather than just taking a blanket approach. So what's next? I think, as I've said, one thing I want to do is encourage you to have internal conversations as to why and how you're working with certain people. Look to adjust the internal sentiment. Move the yardstick and push to have a unique approach. You never know, it might just work. We also are very aware that more research needs to be done in this space. It needs much more understanding. As I showed you previously, there's a whole lot about influence marketing and its short-term success, but more needs to be done to understand the long-term effects on your brand. And actually at Sandton Baines, we're going to be launching a white paper this month discussing in more detail some of the findings I shared with you earlier, which I invite you to take a look at. Before I leave you, just one final thing to think about. We're all aware that emotional advertising is more effective. And we now know that the influence you are using are maybe not driving the effectiveness you'd expect. So is it now time to start thinking about the strategic impact of this? Thank you for your time. Callum Gould, everybody. Thank you. That's fantastic. Now, like I said earlier, the question app is, well, let's say it's not working. So does anyone want to do it in the old traditional way? Stick your hand up and, and yell? Me. Or not? Okay. <laughs> no worries. I'm really interested in, in how the, the research has worked. When was this done? Was it done over the pandemic period? Because do we no, think it was, that it was done just before the pandemic period? Right. Um, and something we're looking at is doing kind of re-evaluation of it to see how sentiments properly changed from the pandemic. Because a lot of research we do ongoing has been able to demonstrate the sentiment has shifted slightly. Yeah. And a lot of the research we've built into this has been able to kind of show that there's been a lot of differences coming through. Um, and yeah, something we're looking to do tail end of this year. So I want to kind of fully out of COVID. Yeah, no, so we, oh, we do have a question. Um, so I'm going to have to run down there. We're going to have to relay this. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hang on, do you, do, do you want to speak into my T-shirt? Joe, I've never okay. thought I'd have to say that today. So <laughs> I was thinking, is it possible that the influencer marketing has been affected by the fact that now all the influencers have to state that it's a paid sponsored ad and that makes it a lot less trustworthy? I can't hear you. I, I, no? I'll come Do to you. Come? Do you I got it. Yeah. Yep. Sorry everyone had to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think that, because now customer uh, influencer ads have to be labelled a lot more now, that the, the people of the, the emotion is now changed because of that? That's where we were, wasn't it? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think it, it also leans into the whole authenticity vibe. If people are aware that a certain person's paid to advertise a brand, so if you can obviously the fact that every single brand is now having to do that means that people know it's not necessarily as authentic as possible. And we're kind of suggesting, it's not something we're experts in, we're experts in image creation. We know there's influencer agencies out there that have a much more defined expertise in that. So what we want people to do is think about using their creative campaigns and then once people are on board with the brand, get them to engage with people further down the line because that's when it actually becomes a genuine genuine approach and you're actually talking to someone who cares and knows about the brand and it could be any level of celebrity they could be working with somebody who I don't know could be a very like low-level micro influencer who's got 10,000 celebrities uh, 10,000 followers on socials or could be a really high level influencer but just having kind of the image of Bradley Cooper being on screen I think demonstrates you, you know that he's not using that watch you know he's not riding that motorbike so yeah I think definitely having that sort of thing strips away that authentic vibe which uh, brands are trying to put on. That's brilliant, and we are bang on time. So, ladies and gentlemen, please get up, uh, Callum Gold of uh, Saddington Baines.